Welcome to Micron's hardware. Recently, the GPU prices are going down and down, and now we can buy multiple different graphics cards at MSRP or slightly above that. Also, the second-hand market is going back to same values. Thus, it is interesting to see how different graphics cards would perform with the different CPUs with modern games in 2022. For this video, I have collected three different CPUs and three different graphics cards, which I'm going to test at three different resolutions. Starting with an entry-level Xeon EFI 2666 V3 CPU, then I proceed with Core i3-12100, and the last one is Core i7-12700K. For the graphics card, I have once the most popular NVIDIA GTX 1060, then I have NVIDIA RTX 2080, and the last one is AMD RX 6800 XT, which is one of the most powerful graphics cards in 2022. These configurations were tested at 1080p, 1440p, and 2160p or 4K. I have also used multiple different games, some of them are using many CPU cores, others are relying on strong IPC and using only one or two CPU cores. The detailed technical specification of my test bench you can see on your screen. From myself I will add that NVIDIA GTX 1060 was tested with a medium graphical preset, while RTX 2080 and RX 6800 XT were tested with high or ultra graphical settings depends on the game. So, let's start with the GTX 1060, 1080p, and we see that Xeonify 2666v3 as well as i7-12700K are demonstrating almost identical performance. Even such game as Far Cry 6, which is using only one or two CPU cores, does not see a difference between these two CPUs. Of course, switching to 1440p doesn't change the picture, and we still see the identical performance. That's why I have decided to skip testing 4K, and I also did not test i3-12100, because if Xeon E5 and Core i7 are performing the same, Core i3 will not add any extra value, but will consume too much extra time. So, let's switch to NVIDIA RTX 2080. This is a much stronger graphics card, and here at 1080p we see that Xeon E5 2666v3 starts to fall behind. For example, in Far Cry 6, the difference between Xeon E5 and Core i3 is about 30 FPS or 30%. It is rather significant. The other tested games are somehow optimized, and there the gap between Xeon E5 and i3-12100 is not that big. For example, in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the performance is almost identical. In Watch Dogs Legion, i3 and e5 perform the same, but i7 is faster. Then we have F1 2021, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where the gap between Xeon e5 and Core i3 i7 is noticeable. In Watch Dogs Legion, Hitman 3, and Total War 3 Kingdoms, the gap is rather small, but it is still there. It's also interesting to mention that in F1 2021 and in Horizon Zero Dawn, Core i3-12100 was actually faster than i7-12700K. This anomaly wasted some of my time, and I retested both of these CPUs multiple times just to get exactly the same result. In a while, I was able to figure out what's going on, but before I share my findings, I would like to yet again mention that I'm still following what's going on in Ukraine, I'm still trying to support my friends, my relatives, who are currently fighting on the front lines, who are trying to do some volunteering work, and simply trying to survive under this horror. Recently, I see more and more media picking up the storyline that Putin is the only one responsible for this horror and for this terrorism in Ukraine, and that the regular or simple Russians are innocent. Unfortunately, it's not the case, and most of the Russian population is supporting this terrorism one way or the other way. If you would like to check some particular individual if they are supporting Russian terrorism or no, then you can ask a few simple questions. First, do they identify themselves as Russian? If yes, then they are already signing up under the government that they are Russian and they are supporting what's going on. Then you can ask how much money they have donated to Ukraine to support Ukrainian army and to support Ukrainian citizens which are currently suffering from their actions. Next, you can ask if they are ready to pay reparations to Ukraine for all the disaster and all the losses Russia has caused inside Ukraine. Then we also need to ask if they are ready to give back the captured territories with no conditions, just return back the territories Russia has captured back to the original and legal owner. For example, Crimea goes back to Ukraine, 
Königsberg or Kaliningrad goes back to Germany, Japanese Kuril Islands are going back to Japan. Russia has also captured a few places of Moldova and Georgia. These shall also go back to Moldova and Georgia under no conditions and no demands from Russia, it just has to go back to the original owner. If one or several of these questions are problematic for a person, this means that this person is a typical Russian who wants to capture other territories but do not suffer from sanctions. They don't want to have a war because they suffer from the war, but they still want to terrorize and capture their neighbors. And now I'm back to my test results. So I have figured out that if I disable e course or efficient course on my i7-12700K, then as expected it is performing better than i3-12100 in F1-2021 and Horizon Zero Dawn games. This GPU scaling benchmark consumed lots of my time because I had to test 3 CPUs, 3 GPUs and 3 resolutions. That's why I did not have time to retest everything with eCores disabled. But if you're interested to see how i7-12700K performs with eCores enabled and disabled in multiple different games with multiple different graphics cards, then leave me a comment or join my Discord and send me a message and I will try to make a dedicated video. For now, let's move on. Increase in resolution to 1440p and NVIDIA RDX 2080 is no longer that powerful. The performance between all three CPUs is almost identical. Even in Far Cry 6 we don't see a big gap between Xeon E5 and i3 i5 CPUs. The next one is AMD RX 6800 XT at 1080p and here we see the real difference between these three CPUs. In Far Cry 6, for example, Xeon E5 2666 is twice as slow as i7-12700K. i3-12100 12100 is staying right in the middle. In all other games except for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Xeon E5 is slower than Core i7 for about 2080 FPS, so that's rather significant. Core i3-12100 is staying right in between, in most of the games it is faster than a Xeon E5 2666v3 except of Watch Dogs Legion, where both of the CPUs are demonstrating identical performance. Increasing the resolution to 1440p still is not enough to equalize these CPUs. AMD RX 6800 XT is still too powerful for Xeon E5 2666v3. The gap between i3 and i7 is not that big, but Xeon E5 2666 is slower than both of the CPUs. Only two games are demonstrating about the same performance with i3 and e5. It is Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion. Both of these games are able to utilize multiple CPU cores and demand high CPU performance. That's why 10-core Xeon E5 is able to match 4-core Core i3. The last tested preset is RX 6800 XT at 4K. Here I did not bother to test Core i3 because Xeon E5 2666v3 and i7-12700K are demonstrating almost identical performance. Even Far Cry 6, which is using only a few CPU cores, doesn't see big difference between these two CPUs, even though i7-12700K has much stronger single-core performance. For a short conclusion, I can say the following. If you have NVIDIA GTX 1060 or similar graphics card, even if it is GTX 1070 or AMD RX 470, 480, 570, 580, 590 and RX 5500, then there is no difference what CPU you use. Even the cheapest Xeon E5 2666 V3 will do the job just fine. For something like NVIDIA RDX 2080 or AMD RX 5700 XT, you will need at least Core i3-12100. But if you increase the resolution to 1440p, again, Xeon E5 2666v3 is just fine. For 1080p gaming with this Xeon, I would suggest maximum NVIDIA RDX 2070, maybe RDX 3050, then AMD RX 6600, AMD RX 5600 and 5700. And if you have the top of the line AMD RX 6800 XT graphics card, then at 1080p you will need a strong CPU such as Core i7-12700K. At 1440p resolution you would need something like Core i3-12100, and if you play at 4K then it doesn't really matter what CPU you have, even Xeon E5-2666v3 can do it for you. Finally, a few words about pricing. Even though the prices are constantly going up and down, the market is also not stable, 
we have any new releases, so some CPUs are coming, some CPUs are going, some motherboards are coming, some motherboards are going. People are constantly texting me and asking to provide some rough estimation what you can assemble with this or that configuration. Because I have so many different countries watching my videos, I cannot pick just one country to make a price estimation, that's why I have decided to just go with AliExpress and AliExpress only. Let's start with the Xeon E5 2666V3. This CPU can be paired with Machine E6 99MR9A motherboard that I have reviewed not long ago and it has a semi-decent VRM which is enough for Xeon E5 2666V3. Then we can get to the cheapest DDR4 memory, 4 sticks 8GB each or even 2 sticks 8GB each. Additionally, you would need some sort of a cooler to cool down your CPU because the Xeon does not come with a box cooler. All in all, you would have to pay about 230 euros for this combination or even less if you go for only two memory sticks. With Core i3-12100, we can go with the cheapest MSI H610M motherboard. This motherboard is not the best, but it is cheap and it will be just fine for i3-12100. Also, Intel 12th gen CPUs are supporting DDR4-3200 out of the box, thus we do not need B660 or Z690 to overclock memory to this speed. So we just need two sticks, 8GB each DDR4-3200, and then maybe adjust memory timings if you feel like it. All in all, for this combo from AliExpress you would have to pay about 305 euros. As you can see, the price difference is not huge, but it is significant. Now let's compare pluses and minuses. With Xeon E5, obviously the plus is some extra cash that can be spent for a better graphics card or for an SSD. Then we are getting 40 PCI Express lanes if you would need that and 32GB of memory. 32GB of memory would be nice if you do video editing or you plan to do some online streaming. From the cons, we of course have the old LJ2011 version 3 platform with a Chinese motherboard. Then we also have somehow weak single-core performance and high power consumption with these old Xeon E5 CPUs. On the other hand, Core i3-12100 is a much newer platform with the MSI motherboard, which is much better than Machinist motherboard. It also supports PCI Express 4.0 and USB 3.2. Single-core performance of i3-12100 is also much much stronger than of Xeon E5-2666 V3 and finally, power efficiency is much better with the modern i3-12100. But we also have a few cons. Of course, it is more expensive than the Xeon E5 option and the MSI H610 motherboard is rather limited. With this motherboard, you do not really have any upgrade path, but it will be just fine for i3-12100 and maybe in the future you would want to install i5-12400. You will be the only one to decide if the price difference is significant or insignificant for you. For myself personally, I would always aim to get the i3-12100 instead of Xeon E5, but I also understand that the 75-85 euros difference that you have between these two platforms is not a small chunk of cash. This can be used to buy a better graphics card, and with the better graphics card combined it with a slower CPU, in most of the cases you will get better gaming performance than if you get the i3-12100 and a weaker graphics card. Lastly, I would like to say that I always recommend you to check your local stores and your local second-hand market. And only if you are not able to find a good deal in your local country, then you can go to AliExpress. Because AliExpress is not a safe place and AliExpress does not provide you any warranty. Whatever you buy on AliExpress is buy and forget. If it works, you are happy. If it doesn't work, you are screwed. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and educational, bye for now!